Hey, welcome to Inbox Blueprint. Congratulations on a great decision. I'm so excited to have you here. And guess what? You are officially going to be called an inboxer now. That's what I'm going to refer to you as. Listen, there is a wealth of training and information in this site, plus a wealth of support. We are here to wrap ourselves behind you and show you how to get your message out to the world while building a business right from your home. I've been doing this for 11 years and I'm excited to be able to help you do it now as well. So with that said, if there's anything we can do to help you, please do reach out. Please let us know. We are here to support you in any way possible. But now what I want you to do is start with step one. It is right below this video. All right. And I want to make sure you show up to all of our live events. We are going to be doing lots of training, lots of workshops on the internet. You can do them right from your home. It's a key part of succeeding using this system, this blueprint. Okay. So start with step one right now below and make sure you also register for our first live training. I'll see you soon. All right. So you must be wondering what is email marketing? That's what every inboxer does. Well, I'm going to explain it to you very quickly and very simply. Email marketing is the ability or it's the process of developing a database of email addresses. Now, if I get a little technical, don't worry. You don't have to do any of this. You don't even have to know what a database means, but basically it's one central area and we'll talk about it. It's called an autoresponder. And in that area, you start to get people to opt in for your newsletter or your easing, or we'll call it your list. You know, those are three words I may use interchangeably. Now, as those people opt in to hear from you, you will start sending them emails. Now in those emails, you can direct them anywhere in the world you want. Okay. So you could, you know, send an email message that just has content and nothing else. You could send an email message that tells them to click a link and go to your blog to click a link and go to your Facebook page, your YouTube page, your Twitter page. You could send a link and tell them to go to someone else's pages. Uh, but more specifically, you can send a link to them, right? You write a promotion or you write something and there's a link in there that sends them to a affiliate link. It sends them to someone else's website where if they take an action, maybe they make a purchase, maybe they opt in, maybe they fill in a form, whatever it is they do, you get compensated for that. You get paid for that. Now, obviously it's up to you to direct what you send your list. So you're going to be the person in control of what out there you want to endorse. So all of a sudden you're like a celebrity. You get the option of endorsing other people's products and you have a voice in the world. People are listening and are actively opening your emails to see what you have to say. That's why it's very important. You take good care of those who join your list. All right. So for example, you joined inbox blueprint, you became one of our customers, one of our students, most likely you came from an email because someone you trust endorsed this very product, right? So that whole process is email marketing. Now that's what we're teaching, but biggest of biggest companies use email marketing. They use it for brand building. They use it to promote their own products. They use it to stay in touch with their customers. They use it to deliver communication or content or anything that, well, they want to say to their customer. Look, I know that the mobile phone now has become the next big craze and everyone says everyone's using a mobile phone and that's well and good, but it's still email. Most of the people are still what checking their email on their phone when they click a link and it is only when they're at their computer that they take positive action, like making a purchase or doing something that'll make you commissions. So whether it's mobile, whether it's Facebook, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Google, I don't care. Most of it is fueled by email. Email is still the base of everything. All right. My business, I would say easily 93%, if not more comes from email in one way or the other. Even if I release a product and I have tons of affiliates sending me all my traffic, well, where did those affiliates get their traffic? You guessed it from email. So that's email marketing. It's very simple. The process, which you're going to learn as an inboxer is how to build that email list, how to communicate with them, how to monetize them and how to lead and guide them and how to get your message out to the world. Now, if any of this seems even slightly frightening, if any of this seems even slightly confusing, it's 
2K. None of it is such. I'm going to walk you through the process very simply, very easily, and very quickly. So if you're afraid of writing, or if you feel you don't know anything about web design, or you're not technical, or you still don't even understand what an affiliate program is, it's OK. I made that assumption. I'm going to walk you through it all piece by piece. But what I want you to understand as you become an inboxer is your life bloodline in this business is email. All right? So in the next video, I'm going to actually go to the whiteboard and I'm going to diagram for you what the inbox business model really is. All right, so now let's discuss the inbox blueprint business model. I'm going to use my handy whiteboard here. I'm a big whiteboard fan, by the way. I'm going to be using it throughout the entire course. All right? So what is this business? How does it come about? How do you eventually make money? What is email? What is inbox? All these questions right now, we're going to answer them. So you come onto the internet. First of all, you must know, right? Everything you do on the internet, any business you want to start, it starts with traffic. You have to get traffic to a page. That's just a standard rule. So we're going to list this right here. Let's say you've got traffic and it is coming in from various sources. So, you know, you could be having Facebook, YouTube, solo ads, social media. I'm going to go through all that in the future, so don't worry, don't get overwhelmed. For now, it's just good enough to know that you've got something like traffic that's coming. What happens in the inbox blueprint business model is that that traffic goes to something we call an opt in page. Now, this term, you can also hear it called a squeeze page, or you may hear it called a flycatcher. I almost always refer to it as an opt-in page, okay? Now, an opt-in page is very simple. An opt-in page has a headline and has some bullet points, and then it has a big box here. And it allows for someone to put their email address in. That's it. That is an opt-in page. So the anatomy of an opt-in page, I'm going to discuss that in a later video. I'm going to show it to you in great detail. But the whole point is all of your traffic goes to this. So for example, if someone were to go to, you know, I'm just making this as an assumption. This is not a domain I even own, so there's no point in going there. But if that was my domain name, onic.com, you would go to that and you would simply see one page. Most likely, you don't even need to scroll your browser. It would just be there present as is, okay? And it would have a promise. It would make some statement. And so the person looks at it and says, yes, I want it. And they get their email here and they hit a submit button, okay? Once they hit this submit button, their email goes to two, well, their email goes to one place and the visitor goes to another place. So essentially, this is what happens. Now, this is done for you on the fly. It's automatically done. So you don't have to worry about any of the technology of what I'm about to talk about. But it's good for you to know, all right? So firstly, the email is going to go here, OK? It's going to go into a database. Now, this database is called an autoresponder. I'm going to go over that in the future. Just remember the terminology called an autoresponder. The user, the actual person, okay, so that user is now going to be directed to a link, any page you've said for them to go to. Again, that is very easy to do. It's a setting. You fill in the, the URL, and I'll show you exactly how to do it, and it's done, all right? So they are going to go to another page, essentially, another web page on the internet. So I'm just going to say URL. This, congratulations, is Inbox Blueprint. This is all there is. You're not building a blog. You're not building a, a, very, a, you know, a complicated e-commerce store. You're not doing anything that has technology involved. As a matter of fact, this URL, this page, does not even have to be on your site be somewhere else. It'll just go to that URL and I'll show you exactly how to do that in the future. So essentially your potentially multi-million dollar business on the internet that is allowing you to broadcast your voice to the world consists of just one page.
page. That's it. Just one page. Now, there is stuff that happens over here. Okay? There is thing, there are things that happen here. For example, once they go into the autoresponder, I'm going to show you how to set up a series of messages that go out on immediately. For example, as soon as they their email goes to the autoresponder, the autoresponder immediately shoots an email to them on your behalf. You don't have to do anything. And you can set it up for the first 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, one year, so that every single day this user will get an email based on the day they joined. It is incredible. All right? All done automatically. Then what you can also do, see these are automated messages. So I'm going to write automated here. I can't excuse my handwriting. I'm trying to write from far away. Those are automated messages. Now what you can also do is send what I call a manual message. Now, the manual message is you actually log into your autoresponder and you type a message out and it gets broadcasted to every email that's sitting in this database. All right? In my business, I would, to be very honest with you, 90 plus percent of my revenue, my activity, my business rotates around sending manual emails. Manual. All right? Now, this is very, very important. And I'm going to show you how to do it. All right. And if I were, let's say I practice more of what I preach, I would focus a lot more on automated messages. I really would. But I, I kind of like to stay in the, in the current. I like to send out messages that reference current events. I, so I don't build too much of an automated series. But I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, in a, very, well, in a video coming up very soon, I'm going to discuss this a lot. Okay. In an inboxing business, I have found over the last 11 years, there is one place on the internet that is the most underutilized real estate on the internet. And that's this. It's the thank you page. So in a video coming up very soon, I'm going to talk to you about the thank you page. Why do we call it that? Well, basically, when someone subscribes to your list, you're thanking them and sending them to a page that thanks them. Well, guess what? That's the problem. That's the biggest mistake you can make. You don't need to thank them. All right? So that's coming up in a future video. It's coming up in a video probably titled Thank You Page or the biggest mistake or the biggest, uh, uh, you know, the most underutilized real estate on the internet. But for now, welcome. This is Inbox Blueprint. Right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use ClickBank to research niches for your email marketing business. Now, as you know, it is a much better idea to go into a niche that has been proven time and time again to be profitable than it is to try and reinvent the wheel, especially when you're just starting out. Now, ClickBank allows you to see exactly which niches are thriving and which ones aren't. So if you have an idea for a niche, Coming to ClickBank and confirming that it is, in fact, a thriving niche is a great idea. What you want to do is you want to go to the ClickBank Marketplace, which is at the top of the screen. When you get to the Marketplace, you'll see that there's a bunch of categories on the left side of the screen. This is where you can research niches. Now, there's, remember, there's four things you want to ask yourself when you're determining whether or not a niche is a good one for your email marketing business. ClickBank can directly help with three of them, and I'm going to show you how using two different niches. The first would be diet and weight loss. The second is going to be student loans. So let's start with dieting and weight loss. What you want to do is you want to find the category that it's under, in this case, health and fitness. When you click on health and fitness, a bunch of different niches in that category come up from beauty to men's health to spiritual health all kinds of stuff as you can see here's diet and weight loss so let's click on that now all the different offers that are being promoted appear this tells you something very important as you know two of the questions you need to ask yourself are are there lots of things to sell and are customers known to buy? Well, 
if there's a bunch of offers, then that niche probably meets those two requirements. As you can see, there are 44 pages of offers in the diet and weight loss niche. So that tells you right away, this is a thriving niche. Now, another question you need to ask yourself is, can you market to this niche in a profitable way? For each product in its marketplace, ClickBank shows you a critical piece of data called gravity. This number indicates how many affiliates are making sales of that product. And it's generally an excellent indicator of online profitability. So you can see what the gravity score is by sorting the list of offers by gravity. And as you can see, you have some really high numbers here. This one has 294, scroll down a little bit, this one has 89. You know, we're still on the first page and we got 36. There's some very profitable offers in this niche. So that's a terrific sign. When you look at those three things together, diet and weight loss is a terrific niche for your email marketing business. Now let's take a look at another niche, student loans. Let's scroll back down to categories on the left side of the screen. We'll go to education, student loans. Now, as you can see, there's only two offers in the student loan niche. That is not a good sign. There are not a lot of things to sell here. And if there's only two offers, customers are probably not known to buy. Now, if you sort by gravity, you'll see that the gravity score of the highest ranked offer in this niche is 0.12. Remember, in diet and weight loss, you were seeing gravity scores of like 200 and something. So student loans, probably not the most profitable email marketing niche to get into. And that's exactly how you use ClickBank to make those determinations. Remember, you're looking at three things here. Are there things to sell? Are customers known to buy? And are there profitable offers? And by looking at the number of offers on ClickBank and by seeing what the gravity scores are of these different offers, you can get a pretty good idea of those, uh, those three questions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use magazines.com to brainstorm niches for your email marketing business. Now, you learned earlier about ClickBank, which is a great site for confirming that a niche is good for email marketing. But what if you don't have any ideas? What if you're saying to yourself, I love the idea of email marketing, but I don't really know what to build my newsletter around? Well, you're in luck because magazines.com has all the top selling magazines in the world. And if it's good enough to be a profitable magazine, then it's also probably good enough to be a profitable email newsletter. Now, you're going to have to apply the four questions that you learned about in order to determine whether or not it would translate as well to email marketing as it does into a print magazine. But to get your creative juices flowing, this is a great site to browse around. And that's really how you utilize the site. You just browse. The best uh, section to browse in is to go to all categories. And then on the left here, you'll see all these different categories and magazines from animals to education to history to men's to women's it's all there and what you want to do is you want to click on one let's say parenting for example and all the parenting magazines will come up 
sorted by best sellers so that you can see which ones sell the best. And then just browse, right? These are all magazines that make a decent amount of money. So just kind of browse, you know, if you if one of them strikes your uh, fancy, you can click on it. Maybe we'll click on parent and child here. You can see what it's about. You can see like what's on the cover, right? These are all topics that are covered in this magazine. And just browse around the site and see what catches your fancy. Jot down a list. You know, you may want to jot down five to ten of these. Five to ten niches that uh, you think of as you're going through these. And then apply the four questions that you learned about in the first lesson of this step. So that's really all you need to do with magazines.com. Go to all categories in the top left of the screen. Select a category. Sort by bestseller. And then just browse. That's all you really need to do. In this video, you're going to learn about how to use OfferVault to find offers to promote for your list. Now, OfferVault contains a wide variety of affiliate offers, from CPA offers, cost per action, to CPL offers, cost per lead. For the Inbox Blueprint, you're going to be using OfferVault initially for CPL offers, cost per lead offers, where you get a commission every, every time somebody enters in contact information, generally your name and email address. Some are more sophisticated than that, but you're going to want to stay away from those initially. Now, OfferVault itself is a very easy site to use. Its look is kind of deceiving because you look at it and you say, wow, there's a lot of tabs, a lot of buttons. But actually, all you need to use is the search bar at the top of the page. In the search bar, you enter in the keywords of the niche that you're trying to uh, create a list in. So let's say you have a list on dieting. In the keyword, the search engine box, you would type in diets. And you click on search. When you do so, OfferVault is going to pull up all the offers it has with that keyword, which it just did. Now you also get information on the payout, the type of offer it is, whether it's a lead or a sale, the category it's in, the affiliate network it's a part of, the last time it was updated. This is all good information to have when you're browsing. Now as you can see, the ones at the top here have like a bluish background. These are sponsored, so they're not necessarily going to be the best offers for you to promote. When you go below though, you'll just see the normal search results. Now when you're looking for a CPL offer, which is what you'll use for the tip method, which you're going to learn in step three, what you want to do is go to the top here and sort by payout. You want to find the lowest payout, which I know might sound a little counterintuitive, but in general, the ones with the low payout are going to be the simplest. They're going to be the ones where all they ask for are your name and email address. The higher payout ones will tend to be the ones where they want zip code and credit card number, which you don't necessarily want to promote right away. Now, when you sort by payout, as you can see, that is exactly what it did. So at the uh, bottom here, you have the cheapest ones. This one's 10 cents, this one's 35 cents, 80 cents. In general, you want to find one that's say one to three dollars. So here's some that meet that criteria. So we got like RP, back to school visa. I don't really know what that is. Uh, kids Fit Club, um, Diabetes Wristband, you know, just, just browse these. Look at the last time they were updated because they were updated more recently. That means they're probably actually active. And just kind of do some browsing. You know, click on them. Let's see. Um, let's do Diet Tips Bismo. Right, it's a lead. It's three bucks. That might be a contender. 
Okay. When you click on it, as you can see, you get the information on it, a brief description, some offer details. This one includes an actual picture of the page that you'd be sending your list to. And as you can see, all they ask for is their age, their gender, height, weight. And then they'll probably ask for their email address on the other page. So you can see exactly what you'd be getting into here. Now, if you want to actually join this network, all you do is click on Join Network. And then it'll take you to the page where you need to actually apply. So this is the page that comes up with this offer. And then once you click sign up and you get approved, well, then you can start promoting that offer. And that's really all there is to Offer Vault. It's a pretty simple site. Its look is a little deceiving. You can use it to find some really good offers to promote. We've had a lot of success with it. So I hope this was helpful, and I wish you the best of luck with finding offers on Vault for Vault. All right, it's time to talk about the most underused or the most irritating thing I see on the internet about the inbox blueprint method or the inboxing method. You ready? It's such a simple thing, too. It's that thank you page when someone subscribes. So we had that diagram before, right? Traffic is coming, it's going to an opt in page, and then the person's putting their email, and the user is going to a subsequent page. Now, so many marketers leave this as the standard page inside of AWeber Get Response or Eye Contact. That standard page says, thank you for subscribing, we appreciate your business, blah, 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 blah. That's it. And it actually promotes the autoresponder company. I don't think people understand the amount of money that is being lost when you do that. That thank you page is the most prime real estate on the internet. It's like owning a shop on Rodejo Drive in Los, uh, in Los Angeles and putting up an empty store that says, thank you for coming by. I mean, would you ever do that? That's what so many people do. Or people get smarter and what they do is they make their own page. They put it up on their own website and they direct it to that page. And the top of the page says, thank you for subscribing. Please check your inbox. We've sent you an email. Guys, listen, they subscribed just now to your list. They know they subscribed. They don't need to be reminded of it. Okay. And you can thank them. Do it in the email. But right now, this is the best opportunity. You've got their attention. This is the one time they are watching and listening to everything you are going to say or do. Direct them to an offer. Sell them something. Show them something. Make some money right here. Okay? Do it right. Do it something good. If you have your own product. Now, if you don't, we of course teach that in the coming future. But if you have your own product, then you need to have a sales video or a sales page. You don't need to say thank you for subscribing. But a lot of people don't. Chances are you do not, and that's okay. You can still make a ton, a ton, a ton of money by utilizing this page. You know what I do? And it's so funny. I tell people all of this, and they always say, wow, does that really work? Doing it for years. Six, seven, eight, nine, many years. This link, I just make it an affiliate link. So I just post an affiliate link here. That's it. I don't do anything different. That means the person leaves this site and immediately goes to a completely different domain name, completely different site, but they don't know any better. They don't, it doesn't matter. It never decreases or increases the results. See, if you're sending them to a page here, let's say it's a sales page for an affiliate offer, someone else's pro program that you're promoting and getting commission on. Let's say this headline says, the five quickest ways to lose weight. I'm just going to stick with a really bad headline, but Let's say it says the five quickest ways to lose weight. Your headline on the opt-in page would say revealed the five quickest ways you can begin losing weight, free report. So that when they go and they read that headline, they still feel like the messaging is congruent. So they're still going to read this. Here's what I've discovered. Even if I am paying for my traffic here, even if I'm putting money out of my pocket, 
if I do something correctly, if I do this model correctly, which is what we're teaching you, I can recover anywhere between 50% to 100% of my ad revenue, I mean my ad expenditure, right on the thank you page alone. And that means that your list, that user who you now have access to for the rest of their lives and yours, you either got 50% of the cost covered, it's like getting a 50% discount, okay, or you got it for free. Can you imagine the ability to build an email list for free? How many emails would you be able to buy? Unlimited, but so many people are missing this. Now, I even do this. Are you ready for this? This is really gonna shock you. Sometimes, I don't put a sales offer here. Sometimes, I put a CPA offer or a CPL. If that confuses you, that's also discussed. I have a whole video on that, so watch that. But sometimes, I'll take them to a page. Guess what it is? It's another opt-in page. Isn't that crazy? I take them to another opt-in page. So it says some other headline here, and then there's another opt-in. Now, whoa, you must be wondering, are you crazy? What are you doing? It doesn't seem to make a difference. What I'll do here, okay, is I'll put a middle page. It's a flash page. It comes up for three seconds. Look, for this page, we will be able, we'll teach you exactly how to do it. It's, it's, it's not complicated, it's very simple. But the messaging on the page, it's just like, it's got like a dot, 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 and it says waiting to confirm your email. So the person has a mindset already coming to this page that they need to re-input their email to confirm it. And here, you've taken them to a completely different website. Someone else's with a very congruent message, they put their email in again. You know how many people fill this out? How many people who just filled this email opt-in will fill this out? 50 to 70%. Is that not crazy? So again, Let's do an example for math purposes. And I'm gonna take paid traffic as an example. Let's say you are paying a dollar per opt-in because you're paying, maybe you're paying 40 cents per, uh, per click. Uh, and again, I go over stats and numbers later, so just don't fixate on this. But let's just say for now, you end up spending and advertising a dollar per opt-in. Let's say you find another offer that someone else is promoting through a CPA network where they are paying you $2. Now, of course, my numbers are convenient. I know I did it for simplicity. They could be paying $1.50. They could be paying $1. They could be paying whatever. Do you realize that if you have a 50% opt-in rate and you make $2 and you paid $1, you've just broken even? You just built this whole list for free. Now you can keep building as much as you want. So you can even do CPL offers. There are, you can do all kinds of things with this thank you page. The point of this video is as follows. Do something with the thank you page. Make sure they're being directed to an affiliate. All right, more on that later. All right. <laughs> All right, so what is an autoresponder? Listen, an autoresponder is a very simple thing. Um, a lot of people get scared because I use words like database and all this stuff. It's just me trying to explain it to you, all right? There's basically three companies we talk about when it comes to autoresponders. The first company is Aweber. The second company we talk a lot about is called GetResponse. And the third company that uh, gets talked about a lot is eye contact. Now, there are tons and tons of autoresponder companies. Personally, I seem to use GetResponse. Now, a lot of people will ask why, what, where. Listen, it's just a personal preference. I've grown fond of the company. I have lots of accounts with them. I've learned how to use their system. So when I teach it, uh, or when I teach how to use autoresponders, you'll see me use GetResponse as an example a lot, okay? And we're gonna give you further tours, further details and information about each three of these. But now, for the moment, let's talk about what is an autoresponder. So essentially, an autoresponder is a place that will manage your email list for you. It's a third-party company. There's no technology. You don't have to do anything on your servers, nor do you have to know anything technical whatsoever. 
it's basically a database. I've told you this before, I drew out the picture. And you know, an autoresponder company has millions of these. And when you get an autoresponder, you can actually set up many databases. You don't have to have just one. Each company has their own policy about how many you can have. For example, you might be building a list about uh, health, okay? You might be building a list about spirituality, and you might be building a list about internet marketing. You might be building a list about dating. Now, you could do so all under the umbrella of one autoresponder company, but each of these would be their own autoresponder, okay? Now, a lot of these companies charge differently as well. They'll charge you per month based on the size of your total subscriber base. Some companies will charge you based on how many times you send an email. Some companies will charge you based on how many emails you send in a month. But get response is very simple. They, set you, they, they uh, charge you a set monthly fee based on the total subscriber base you have between all of your autoresponders, okay? So that's the first thing. As people subscribe to you, they get dumped into these autoresponders. Now, there's a lot of really cool things you can do with these autoresponders, some of which I'm not gonna touch on now. I will teach those to you later in the future in advanced sections, but for now, very important you know what I shared with you before. There is what I like to call the automated messages, and there is what I like to call the manual messages, okay? Now, you can set up a series of messages beforehand that say, look, when someone joins an autoresponder, my autoresponder, immediately send them this email. Day one, send them this. Day two, send this. Day three, send this, okay? You could, you could set up an infinite amount of these messages, all right? The second is manual. Manual basically means, let's say, as of today, this minute, I have 10,000 people in my health autoresponder. Well, I can log into my autoresponder and send an email this very moment to those 10,000 people. So whereas here, your entire database may be on different schedules, right? because these 10,000 didn't all join on the same day at the same time. They joined, you know, what, so many joined day this day, then some this day, then some this day. So your autoresponder is really cool. It remembers and manages who should be getting the first message, who's on day six, who's on day 10. But when you do a manual message, you're essentially telling your autoresponder that you want to send everybody in that, uh, in, in that autoresponder a message this minute. Now, Here's just a glimpse of all the really cool things you can do with an autoresponder. Firstly, you can send a message to portions of this list. You don't have to mail to the whole thing. For example, you can actually run data inside of your autoresponder that will tell you, hey, I only want to send an email to those people who did not open my last email. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, let's say you sent a message. You sent it to 10,000 people. Let's say a thousand of them opened and opened and read the message. Well, nine thousand didn't. It's very common. Open rates, you know, are between five to twenty, twenty-five percent. So most of the time, you send a message, a majority of your list doesn't read the message. So the next day, you could choose to send the same message or forward that message out again to the remaining people who had not yet opened the message. That's one thing, you can get, take that further. You can go to clicks. You could say, look, I only wanna send this message to those who did not click yesterday or who did click yesterday. You can segment autoresponders in so many ways. You can send an autoresponder to a certain portion of people that joined your list between certain days. You can send a message to people that are from certain regions, certain areas. I'm telling you, it, the, the, the possibilities when you become an in, advanced inboxer are just, your imagination is really your limit when it comes to what you can do with really good autoresponder technologies. And that's why I said initially when you're first starting, I don't want you to be focusing or thinking about a lot of that. I just want you to focus on the basics. And in the advanced sections, I'm gonna show you how to do all of this because I do use all of it. When your database gets huge, you want to start learning how to segment and who you're sending what to and, 
and all of that. Now, the other thing an autoresponder does for you is it'll track so many things. It'll track opens, meaning of all of your people you mailed, who opened what. It'll track click rates. It'll know exactly who clicked what and who did not. And they will tell you that, hey, on this message, you had a 3% click-through rate or a 7% click-through rate. Now, in a future video, I'm going to actually take you through stats. I'm going to share with you what to expect. If you send out 10,000 emails into an autoresponder, how many clicks should you get? How many what, you, you know, whatever it is, how much of it should you get? All right, but this is all it is. This is an automated technology. Now, when you're inside of an autoresponder, it is going to give you a form, a code, an actual technology code that could freak you out, but I'm going to show you how to work with those codes so it's not that threatening. Well, that code is just going to be copied and pasted onto your autoresponder, uh, onto your opt-in box, or your opt-in page, I should say. So, you know, you have an opt-in page here. You have the headline, your bullet points, this and that. This little snippet right here, this box, would be that form code. That's it. The rest your autoresponder will manage on your behalf. Once you put your email in here, it'll automatically go into the database. It'll go into the right database as you assigned for it, and then the person will get forwarded to the thank you page. How cool is that? Nice, simple, straightforward, all managed for you. In order to be an inboxer, you have to have an autoresponder. There is no getting around it. You can choose whether you want to use AWeber, GetResponse, iContact, Content Contact, uh, whew, GVO. There's so many of them. Personally, if you want to be able to go right along with what I teach, you know, use GetResponse because you're going to see a lot of examples using GetResponse, and it's a nice, inexpensive, uh, perfect solution. Just great for my business. All right. So we'll talk more about autoresponders as we keep going through, but I wanted to give you a general introduction so you understand what that word means. All right. See you on the next one. In this video, I'll talk a little bit about the benefits of using GetResponse. GetResponse is a highly rated and excellent email autoresponder. And while there are many reasons we like it, perhaps the biggest is the 98% delivery rate. As an email marketer, that's huge. There's nothing worse than your emails ending up in your customer's spam folders. With GetResponse, this is a rare occurrence. They have excellent user experience from sign up to getting your list set up. It's very easy and it's very fast. As your list grows beyond, you still get very competitive pricing and you can save 18% by paying for one year upfront. So pricing is very affordable across the board. You can create free online surveys, which allows you to interact and get feedback from your list without having to pay for it extra with a third party site. You can deliver emails at a specific time in any time zone. It's called world time. It can be very important if you have international subscribers. For example, if you want to send out an email at exactly 12 noon, regardless of where they live, then you'll want to use this feature. GetResponse has great customer support as well. When you need help, they're always there. The excellent how-to videos as well walk you through every part of the system, so you always have the help and guidance that you need. In addition, emails look terrific on any device. Many autoresponders have a difficult time generating emails that look good on mobile devices and tablets. GetResponse takes care of this for you. But most importantly, double opt-ins are optional. You'll recall that double opt-ins are when new subscribers have to verify their email address in a follow-up email. Asking people to go through two steps to sign up reduces your conversion rate. With GetResponse, you can choose to go with single opt-in instead. This means you can build a larger list faster and make it easier for your audience if they're not savvy to things like, say, Google's Promotions tab. Are there any downsides to GetResponse? Well, we don't think so, and that's why we use GetResponse for our list. GetResponse offers a 30-day risk-free trial, and they don't even ask for your credit card information up front to sign up, which we like very much. This gives you the opportunity to play around with all of the features and functions and really get into the system. And you don't have to worry that you'll forget to cancel if you don't care for it. This is about as risk-free as you can get when you're on a budget. Just click Try It Free when you get to the GetResponse.com homepage. All right, this is what it looks like. Just click on the Try It Free button. This will take you to a very short form for creating your trial account. Just fill in your email, password, your first name, and then click Create Account. 
Now you want to check your email for an account activation email. When you click the activation button, it'll take you to the get response site where you'll be able to complete your setup process via a very simple step-by-step -step wizard. After completing the setup process, check your inbox one more time for a welcome email. That email is going to contain a couple of links for setting up your first newsletter or campaign. You can either watch a video tutorial or you can simply download the PDF manual. When you're ready to upgrade from your free trial, the starter plan of $15 a month is very competitive with other autoresponders for what you get. So finally, a quick recap. GetResponse is our first choice in autoresponder services. You don't need to use a credit card to get a trial account for 30 days. And GetResponse is very feature rich and is an excellent choice when you're just starting out. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about eye contact and then show you how to create an eye contact account. Now, eye contact is one of the largest, and most respected autoresponders out there. Like AWeber and like GetResponse, it's a terrific choice for an email marketer at any level. The biggest benefit of eye contact is that it's the simplest to use. If you're a new email marketer and you just want to start a new campaign, collect email addresses, and send out emails, it doesn't get simpler than eye contact. The downside of eye contact is that when you do have a larger list, it can get a little expensive, as you're going to see in a second. Now, if you want to create an account on eye contact, you want to go to their home page, and then on the top right corner, click on pricing. When you do, you get a list of their plans. You might have to scroll down to see them. Now, as you can see, starting out, it's only $10 a month. However, as you get more subscribers, that amount goes up and up and up until, look at this, 15,000 subscribers cost $109 a month. Now, the good news is that by that point, you're going to be making a lot of money with email marketing. But it is a higher price point than some of the other options you have. One cool thing that eye contact offers is a free trial. You can try eye contact out for free to you know see if you like it. However, if you can, I would recommend just buying an account. In fact, I'd recommend buying an annual account. Not only does that give you a discount, but it forces you to commit. If you put real money down to start your eye contact account, you're a lot less likely to quit because you have real money on the line. Whatever you decide to do, filling out your information is pretty self-explanatory. You can even sign in with your social media information. Just fill in your information, click sign up, and boom, you have an eye contact account. In the next video, you're going to learn about how to actually use eye contact. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jeff. Welcome back. Um, once again, I'm going to be covering here the basics of AWeber, which is one of the autoresponders we recommend. Uh, this video should not be more than five or ten minutes, so hang out, pay attention. This is important, and you are going to learn. So before you begin, uh, go to aweber.com so you can follow along. Uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is when you sign up, uh, while there is no free trial, you can try it free for $1 for the first month, which is an amazing deal. So I'm going to click on Get Started. Uh, you got a few different pricing options, 20 bucks a month, or I'm sorry, 19 a month, 49 every three months, you can save 8 bucks that way, or 194 a year, which you can save 34 bucks, which is not a bad deal. Uh, I myself do monthly. Um, I like tracking my bills monthly. That's just me. Uh, login name is going to be your username, so make sure you choose that wisely. Um, something I do want to point out, when you enter your billing address, uh, I do highly recommend getting a P.O. box. Uh, the reason is your billing information, your address, does show up at the bottom of each email you send. Uh, you'll notice some marketers do use fake uh, addresses or fake P.O. boxes. I certainly do do not recommend this. Um, so I do recommend getting an actual P.O. box uh, unless you're okay with people having your home address. 
uh, on that. Um, so anyways, the benefits of AWeber. Uh, AWeber is a really, really good autoresponder, uh, along with Git Response is one of my personal favorites. Uh, it's basically got all of the same features. Um, as I showed you before, the sign up process is very easy and straightforward. Um, they've got excellent customer support and excellent training. They've got a knowledge base full of a uh, ton of articles and information to help you get started. Um, something they do that I love a lot is they've got training videos galore. If you're stuck, if you cannot figure out how to do something, you can check out their knowledge base. You can check out their video tutorials. And this is good stuff. And it's going to answer every single question you might have and then some. Um, something else that's nice as well is scheduling backups is very easy to do with a Weber. As your list grows, you want to make sure you do this with it so you don't lose your information by mistake. And it only takes a few minutes, literally. Um, so again, the cons of AWeber, there's no free trial. So you cannot get in and play with it for free. But as I mentioned before, you can sign up for $1 for the first month. But you will be required to use a credit card. So remember to cancel if you're not going to be using it. Um, this, uh, con number two, the second thing we don't like is there's no, I'm sorry, double opt-in is on by default. Now, if you recall from the previous training, double opt-in is where your subscriber has to confirm their subscription by clicking a link in a confirmation email. If they don't do that, you will not be able to email them and they will not be added to your list. So on AWeber, double opt-in is called confirmed opt-in confirmed opt or verified opt-in and it can only be disabled by contacting support or by installing a script. Uh, I'm going to show you one way around that. I've got two AWeber accounts and I'll explain that in a minute. I'm going to log into one real quick. Back in a second. Okay, I'm logged into my second account right now. Um, if you go to the top right here to list options and click on that, and then click on confirmed opt in right here, if you scroll down here, right here, number two, you're going to be able to turn off the double opt in. So when you first create an account, when you create your very first list, if you do not turn this off the very first time, it's going to be on by default. So what you do is you log into AWeber. You're going to go over here. This is going to be green for on. You want to turn it off and click on yes. And once again, that's going to allow people to be sent a thank you email directly with their requested information. They will not have to click on a link within an email to sign up. Now the one last thing, the one last con I wanted to mention, and the reason I have a second AWeber account, is they are not forgiving of make money niches. Uh, meaning, uh, when you send out emails, people are going to forget when they signed up. People are going to click on mark as spam. It's usually not too many though, but AWeber is really not forgiving of make money online type niches. They've got virtually a zero tolerance policy. Uh, my first account, uh, I wasn't disabled, but they forced double opt-ins for every list I create on that account, which is why I made a second account for different things like you know dog training and picking up girls and relationship advice and you know making music online, downloading music. I've got a whole bunch of other lists on here that have nothing to do with making money online, and they're all and they're all single opt-in. Double opt-in is disabled, and that's never been a problem. So again, uh, to recap things for you, AWeber can be really, really good for beginners looking for ease of use, and if you've decided on turning double opt-in off. Uh, however, again, if you're in any online marketing or home business niches, I would probably recommend get response or eye contact over AWeber. So if you have any questions, let us know. Um, but I promise you AWeber is very, very straightforward. Um, thank you so much. We'll see you on the next video. So in this short video, I'll show you how to create your first campaign or create any campaigns in the future as well. And by campaigns, I mean setting up your first list so that you can start accepting subscribers to that campaign. You're going to come up here where it says your current campaign. You're going to click on the drop down arrow and then click on create a campaign. Here we'll give our campaign a name. This 
has to be between 3 and 64 characters, only lowercase, and it can only use an underscore within that name. So if you have a name and it's already taken, you can usually put an underscore in there, uh, and that will usually free up that name so that you can grab it for your own. So I'm just going to do a test campaign, or actually test list. I'm going to put an underscore because that will probably be taken, but just in case, this is an example of what we can do. So click on create new campaign and now we're ready to edit the campaign settings. So really that's the first thing you want to do. You're going to see three sections, general, profile, and permission. So here's our name that I put in the previous step. You can always edit that by coming over to the right hand side. If I hover over it, you'll see the edit link appears. English has been selected by default. Notifications on. This means you'll receive an email every time a subscriber signs up to your list. It's probably good to have that on initially if you're new to setting up lists and, and building your campaigns and getting subscribers. Uh, and then you can choose where you want those sent to in this drop down or add a new email uh, just for those notifications. Once you start getting a lot of subscribers, you'll want to come in and turn that off. Make sure your postal address is correct. This has been entered by default once you set up your account. This is required by law to be included in your emails, in the footer of your emails by the Ken Spam Law. All right, so the next step is go to Profile. We're looking at Campaign Title, Category, and Description. Keep in mind the title that you enter and the description will be seen by your subscribers among the various pages that they may see in the process. For example, confirmation pages, unsubscribe pages, etc. So keep that in mind when you're coming up with these titles. So what you want to do is hover over that section and click on it. It's going to free up the field for you to type in the appropriate title. Then you, and then you want to click on Save after you're done to, to save that information. Category, I'm going to click Cancel for now. Actually, I'll just go ahead and fill this in with uh, Demo. Click on Save. Agencies, I want to click on that, and we'll select one from the drop-down. Okay, so if I'm in the healthcare niche, I'll select that one and then click on Save. Campaign description, same process. Click on it, fill out the description. Just make sure you put in the description that best defines the content that your subscribers will be receiving and then click on Save. If you have a logo for your business, you're welcome to put it here. RSS feed, you don't have to do anything with that. And if you'd like to preview the pages that GetResponse has created for you, you can do so right here from the confirmation to unsubscribe page, unsubscribe success page, and newsletter directory where your newsletter archive page uh, will appear. So now let's go to the third step on the left-hand side, and this is permission. This section is very important because you want to be able to determine at this point whether you're going to set up your subscriptions as single opt-in or double opt-in. In earlier training, we're recommending the single opt-in. And to do that, you'll want to untick the subscription source where you want it to be single opt-in. In this case, it would be web subscriptions. Okay, So I've unticked that. That now means web subscriptions are now automatically single opt-in. Let's talk about email subscriptions. Most people don't use this. How this works is if someone sends an email to your autoresponder email address, they will be automatically subscribed to that campaign. Most people don't use this again, and most people don't even know this exists. However, if some maybe scammer or, or spammer out there uh, discovers that somehow you just never know how these, uh, these individuals find these addresses, but they do. Uh, little protection is always just to leave that ticked, okay? Import subscriptions. If you're importing a, a list to your GetResponse account, this is the option whether you want to have that double opt-in or single opt-in. Okay. Next, you want to choose confirmation message only if you're using the double opt-in. A confirmation message will not be sent out if it is single opt-in. And then you can choose whether plain text or HTML, the from field email address, the message subject, and then customize your confirmation message if you want it to be different than the pre-selected options. Okay? Again, just uh, only if you're using a double opt-in. Confirmation page, again, only if you're using double opt-in. You can have the 
hosted page by GetResponse that they create for you. You can preview it by clicking this link or creating a custom page, the page that your subscriber would see after he confirms his email address by clicking on the link in the uh, email message that they receive, okay? So really not much to do here, especially if you're only using single opt-in, but this is where you do it in the permissions section. So now you have your campaign ready. You're ready to start accepting subscribers through your web forms. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your web form within GetResponse so you can start collecting email addresses. I'll also show you how to customize that form so that you're only asking for the email only. And then I'll show you how to set up a custom thank you page. This is the page where you want subscribers to see or be redirected to after they subscribe. So let's get started. There are two ways to create your web form. And the first is staring us in the face. It's called the Create Web Form option right in the middle of the dashboard. The dashboard is the first page you see once you log into your GetResponse account. So this will be the obvious. However, if you're not on the dashboard and you decide you want to create a web form, just go to the navigation menu at the top, hover over Web Forms, and then come down and select Create New. However, before you do anything, you want to make sure you select the campaign that you're creating a web form for. You can come to this drop-down box, select the campaign. If there are more than one, it will show. However, there are only one in this demo account, so we'll just use the uh, current selection. I'll go ahead and click on Create Web Form. You'll see there are three steps, the Design Step, Settings, and then Publish. In the Design Step, you get to choose the design of the form that you want. You can click the arrows to see all of the designs and choose the one that you want if you have a specific theme that it matches. However, for this demonstration, I'm going to use the default, which I like quite well. This will give you a preview once you click on it. If this is, in fact, the one that you like, just click on Apply. Then we'll be able to scroll down to the bottom of the page where we can start making our changes. You can customize this form in many ways, including font, font size, background color, borders, etc. But I'm going to cover the basics in this video. First, I want to look at the bottom of the designer page where it says Show and Hide. These are options that you can either show or hide on your form. If it is grayed like this, that means these options have been chosen by default. So if we look at our form, we can see there's a header that's been chosen by default. There's a footer, which says Email Marketing by GetResponse. Actually, this, this blank area is the footer, but just above that footer is We Respect Your Privacy, which is the privacy. Powered by is Email Marketing by GetResponse. And then you can always put a headline above the form if you want, and that's called a header. So if we want to deselect any of these, we're just going to click on the gray area and that will remove them. I'm going to remove Powered By as well. And to get rid of this footer space, I'm going to click on Footer. And then you can make a decision whether you want to keep the privacy statement that is offered by GetResponse or if you want to create your own privacy statement. I'm going to leave it for this demonstration. Now, as is, we can see we have Name Field and Email Field. If you don't want the name and you're only asking for the email, which is what we're going to recommend for this demonstration, then we'll just simply click on Name and that removes it. So what is left is the email field and the sign up button and we have a chance to edit this further by editing what the label is on the button by clicking the Edit button. I hovered over the button, clicked on Edit and this allows us to change the verbiage. You may want to change this to more customize it to the offer that is being exchanged for their name and email address. For instance, if you're letting them to a members area, this might be let me in. If you're telling them you're gonna offer them access to a specific page or site, for example. Or if you're just offering them a report, you might say, uh, send my report. Or you could simply just change it to subscribe. Either way, this gives you an option to update the label on the button. The other thing we can edit is the size. If we need to bring this out further or even bring it in further, then we can just click on where it says Resize, click on the Resize tab, hold in your mouse button, and move it left or right. So at this point, I think we're ready to move on. You have an option to click on Save and Preview if you like, but if you think you're happy with what you see here as is, then we can come down and go to the next step, which is shown at the bottom of the page here. I'm going to go to Next Step for now, and then save it on the next page. In this step, first thing we want to do is change our web form name at the top. We want to remove the default form name and give it a name that's relative to our offer so that when we look up our web form list later and see this web form, we'll know what it's all about. So in this case, I'm just going to type in demo. 
This tells us that our list that is related or tied to this form is single opt-in, so confirmed opt-in has been turned off. We're going to ignore or subscribe via Facebook and then come down to the section for creating a thank you page. Default thank you page is there by default. It is the page that Get Response creates for your subscribers, but we want to create a custom thank you page. We're not actually creating the page, but we're creating a URL, a link to a page where we want subscribers to go after they opt into our form. In this case, for the example, we'll be talking about a CPA link so that when people click, they'll go over to a page that is also called a cost per lead because that page will be asking for their email address and you'll get paid for every email that is uh, submitted. So just for that example, what we want to do is go grab our affiliate link, our CPA link, and then come back in here and highlight HTTP because we don't want that in there twice. And then we'll just right click and paste our link. Once that's done, we want to save our web form and then go to the next step. At this point, we can grab our code that we want to insert into our web page so that the form will now be live and ready to accept subscriptions. I'm going to recommend that you grab the JavaScript code, which is shown by default, which is less code and less bloating on your web page as far as uh, the amount of code. Very simple. So we can click in here and click and drag everything. We'll right click and copy, save it to a text pad or notepad or something along those lines so uh, that it preserves the code. And then we can paste it into our web page where we want it to appear. The good thing about using the JavaScript is that once you paste it uh, into your web page, once you use JavaScript, you can come back into GetResponse and make changes to that web form, to the, to the design. You can change the background color, uh, maybe add a border. Customize it even further without, and then once it's changed, it automatically and dynamically appears on the web page live. So you don't have to come back in here and grab the code again and repaste it onto your web page. So it's convenient. In this video, I'm going to be covering how to send out an email to your subscriber list, how to send out a mass email in text. And then I'll also show you real quickly how to pull up the spam checker to see if your email might be considered spam and get caught in the filters of your recipients. To get started, as with creating a web form, you have two options. Of course, the easiest is just going to be to choose the icon, create newsletter. But if you're somewhere else on the site and you want to use the navigation menu, go to the top where it says messages, hover over it, and then click create newsletter. Either way, that will help you get started. We'll just click on the big icon to get us started. So we want to first create a text email. So let's click on the left side of the page where it says new email creator. We'll put in a message name. This is just for our reference. So I'm just going to put in demo for now. Subject line that's going out. And then you want to choose the appropriate email address that is appropriate for your audience. If you have several uh, lists and campaigns where you want to send out emails, you may have several different email addresses that are appropriate for those campaigns so that they'll recognize who you are and what that email is about. So if you have more than one email, you'll see it in the drop down box. Just select the one that is appropriate for this campaign. Of course, if you need to change or create a new email, just come down and click on add new from email address. Next, you'll have an option to turn on the click through to track your click through rates or you can turn Google Analytics or both on or off. At this point, they're both off by default. If I wanted to track my clicks, I can certainly just click the on button. Same with here. If I want analytics, click the on button. I'm going to turn those off for now. You want to see this off if you're using the HyperTracker third party tracking service as well. So just make sure this is off if you're not going to be using the internal uh, tracking service from GetResponse. All right, we won't be doing the AB split test or publishing and sharing via Twitter or Facebook in this uh, demo demonstration. What we are going to do is come over here and see the next step button at the bottom of the page. And then we'll click that to go to the next step. What's going to happen here, it's going to load up by default pre-designed HTML templates, but we want to come over to the left hand side of the page, scroll down till you see plain text and click on that. That's going to bring up the, the message editor for us. And here I can either type or copy and paste an email that I've prepared to send out to my list. I've already prepared a sample email that I've copied and now I'm pasting. 
I want to hit the enter key a few times just to give it a few spaces before the unsubscribe information that goes out with each email. If I had not put some spaces, then all of that would have been immediately under my name. That would have been here, you know, with the uh, unsubscribe link, and etc. So just to make it look nice and more professional, I always create a few extra lines there, okay? Now something I want to point out, you see it says wrap long lines, and then you see this recommended width length right here. This is the recommended number of characters maximum that they recommend that you send out with. Okay, so don't go over that line. But I had already put some hard returns when I wrote this letter prior to pasting it in here. But if I had not, and I pasted it without those hard returns, it goes over that line. All I have to do is click on wrap long lines, and it puts it within the correct recommended width. Okay, just a little tip for you. So a couple things we can do from here. We can go down to the bottom of the page where we see test message and I can click inbox preview and when I do that it's going to pull up a different tab and it's going to start pulling up previews of how that email will look in various email clients from AOL to Gmail, Yahoo, some desktop clients including Outlook Express etc and even on the Android phone. So this is very useful to double check before you send out just to make sure nothing looks funny. Now it takes a couple of minutes to load up these preview windows, but we can see here that everything seems to look fine. You can always scroll through and just do a final look uh, just to make sure everything looks good to you. If so, we can go back to the previous page. And there's another way to test it. If you just want to send a quick test message to your own email client, such as Gmail or however you check uh, your mail, just come up here and click Test Send Message. And when you do that, use the drop-down box to select the email you want to send that test message to and click Send. Now, whether we're sending text email or HTML email, here's how to check to see if it is going to be considered spam. You click on Spam Score. Okay, we clicked on Test Message and then selected Spam Score. Okay, we want to make sure that it is under five points. Now, with a text email message, unless you have some words or phrases or symbols that usually trigger those uh, the spam filters, it's going to be zero. And that's what we're seeing right here. So a spam score point is zero with a maximum allowed of five. Your email will probably not be recognized as spam. So that's how you check that, okay? Test message, click spam score, and you'll get your score. From here, we'll go to next step, which is at the right bottom corner of our page. From here, we'll be able to choose the campaign or our list that we want to send out our message to. I only have one right now, so I would tick that box. And when I come down, it's going to show me how many subscribers I have total that this is going to be sent out to. Okay, That's how many subscribers I have in my campaign. And since this is just a, a test demo, I only have one. And to send it out, I would go to the next step. and we'll get a message summary. At this point, I have two options. I can click Schedule to schedule it at a specific time, or I can click on Send Now to send it out immediately. In the previous video, I showed you how to create a simple text email to send out to your subscribers. In this video, I'll show you how to create that simple HTML email. And again, we'll take the first step as we did before, and that's click on the icon that says Create a Newsletter. Except this time, we'll go to the right-hand side of the page and click on HTML Source Editor. Again, we'll create a message name. Your subscribers won't see this. This is just for our reference, as you'll remember. We'll put our subject line here. Make sure we have the correct from address going out to our subscribers. For this video, I'll leave all these alone, these other options. Instead, go to the uh, bottom of the page and click on Next Step. When you get to the step, you're going to see this black background. This is actually in code mode, as I call it, where you'll be able to paste in HTML code as if you, cr after creating it from an HTML editor, for example. So if you went to the editor, created the email, and then copied that code and pasted it here, then it would go out uh, as you designed it in that editor. However, for our demonstration purposes here, just to keep it simple, we want to come down to the bottom of the page where it says Show WYSIWYG and click on that. And what we're going to end up seeing is very similar to what you would see when typing in a letter with Microsoft Word. You can see all the options for formatting at the top. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over to the uh, left-hand side where we can start typing in our text, and then we'll make some adjustments.
and I'll go ahead and hit a couple of line spaces afterwards as I did in the text email. Now if we want to format this of course then all we're gonna have to do is just select something and choose a formatting option so I'll bold that if I want to italicize maybe this last line highlight and italicize just like we would do in Microsoft Word correct so now that's really all there is to creating a simple HTML email it just allows us some formatting like we would be able to do in Word that we wouldn't be able to do in our text version you know if we wanted to uh, do some bullet points maybe you want to add some uh, benefits uh, then we can do just like we would do in Word let's highlight each of those and we'll click on the unordered list okay, we can clean that up a little bit but you get the idea. So now we have a formatable email that looks a little better, is more attractive than the text email, allows us to get some open rate tracking, but it also allows us to add an image as well. And I want to show you how to do that. So what we want to do is put the cursor exactly where we want that image, and then we'll find the image icon right here where it says insert edit image if we hover over it. If we click on that, it's going to ask us to provide an image URL so a link to that image that means it has to be hosted somewhere correct so you have some options if you already have a web server and you know how to upload images to that server go ahead and do so grab the link and then paste it right here or if you have an image hosting service somewhere maybe you don't have your own hosting account but you have that external service from a third party you can grab the image URL and paste it here either way whenever you post an image uh, make sure you include the image description um, it's going to bug you to do so if you do not okay so avoiding the long description as to why just go ahead and do that and then uh, click insert however I'm going to show you something for those who do not have hosting image hosting or web server hosting of either kind you can actually host your images and documents on get response in their multimedia studio it's an abuse free hosting service that will not affect email delivery in any negative way. So why not take advantage of it, especially if you don't have any other way of hosting your images, okay? There are a few steps to take to get your images into the Multimedia Studio before you can apply them to the HTML email, and I'll show you those steps right now. What you want to do is go back to your dashboard, okay? And then you're going to see all of these menus at the top. You want to go to My Account and then select Account Details. Look on the left hand menu, come all the way down to Multimedia Studio and click on that. You'll notice that there are some tabs at the top. We have iStock, video, audio, photos and images, documents, and QR code. We're just going to focus on images for this demonstration. Now, if I click on photos and images, I've got one there. I'm going to delete that. Actually, let me cut that out and I'm going to trash it right there. So it's going to show I have an empty folder, which is what you'll see once you come into this for the first time. Your first step is to actually create a folder first. I'm going to type in demo and click on add. Because you have to create a folder before you can add images to it. Once you add images to the folder, then you can access them. Let me show you the iStock. Okay, these are royalty-free iStock photos, and there are about a thousand that get responses, including that you are able to use if you like. In order to use them in your emails, you have to add them to your folder. So let's just say I wanted to use this one. If I click on it, I just get a larger preview, okay? I can click on Add to My Folder, and I created that demo folder just a moment ago, remember? So I want to hover over that and click on it, and then click Add. So now this image is in my demo folder inside my Photos and Images tab. See, there it appears. Now, if you want to add a photo or an image from your own computer, click on Upload File, and that's going to allow you to find images on your computer. Once you find one that you like, just click on it, and then click on Open, and it's going to pull it up into your folder just like so. So how do you get it into your HTML email? You right-click on the image and choose copy image URL okay do you see that let me just pull this down just a little bit so uh, just to make sure you're able to see that I'll do it again right click and choose copy image URL now I'm using Chrome for this demonstration your browser may say select image address instead of 
image URL, but just something of that nature, and you'll be able to grab that link. And now once you copy it, it's in your clipboard. It's ready for pasting. So what we want to do is go back to our HTML email editor. Back in the editor, we want to put our cursor again where we want the image to appear. And then I'm going to go back to the top of the page and select the Insert Edit icon. And now I can paste in, right click and paste, the link to the image and put in an image description. So I'm just going to put Blackboard for this image and then click Insert. So now we have a simple HTML email with some basic formatting with a single image. So it really is as simple as that if you follow the steps shown in this video. Now, of course, again, we could come down to the bottom of the page and we could test our email again if we want. All we have to do is select test message. We can check our spam score again. We can do an inbox preview or send a test message to ourselves if you like. In this video, I'll show you where to find out how many subscribers you have in each of your campaigns at any given time. I'll also show you how to check your open rates for all the newsletters and broadcasts that you have sent out uh, so you know instantly how many people have actually opened your email. I'll also show you how to check your bounce rate, explain what the bounce rate is, and how GetResponse takes care of those type emails. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is how to find out how many subscribers you have in any of your campaigns. And when you first log in, you'll see the dashboard here. If you've had some activity in your account, in other words, people subscribing through your web forms or you know, you've already sent out some newsletters and broadcasts, you'll see some information here in your dashboard. And, and once you log in, you'll see this, just scroll down. And the first thing we see is subscription. So I have one campaign. And what this is telling me is that I have one person subscribed today. And if I wanted to see yesterday, I'd click on this. If I wanted to see the last seven days, I'd click on that link. If I want to see the month, click there. If I want to just go all the way to all time, everyone who's subscribed to that particular campaign, I click on that and it tells me exactly what those numbers are. So let's just say I'm looking at today's and I am. I clicked on that link so we know that one subscribed today. And if we look at the bottom, our total subscribers for that campaign as of today is two. So that's a quick way to see how many subscribers we have. But that's only if you are looking on the dashboard and you've had some activity in that campaign. By the way, here's another view, which I tend to like a little better, the vertical left to right look at all your campaigns. You'll just see them from top to bottom and look left to right. So we'll see there's one subscribe today because I've clicked on that link. Uh, none removed, and the total list size is two. So that's a quick way to look. Otherwise, if you want to find out at any given time, regardless of what is on the dashboard, if you want to find out how many people are in your list, you go up to Contacts, as I showed you there, and then click on Search Contacts. What you want to do is just click on the campaign name. You can leave everything else by default. So contacts all, that's correct. Campaigns, this is the one I'm going to choose. I want to see how many subscribers are in that campaign. And then immediately down at the bottom of the page, you'll see the total number of contacts in that campaign. Now, if you actually wanted to see the physical email addresses that are in that campaign, you just click on the search button and then you'll see a list of all of those emails uh, and names if you accepted names when they subscribe to your opt-in form initially. So that's a quick way to find out exactly how many subscribers are attached to any of your campaigns within GetResponse. Again, you just go up to Contacts, click on Search. So now let's talk about what your open rates are. How many people are actually opening your email? Let's go back to the dashboard We'll click on that in the top navigation and we'll scroll down once again and really what you're going to be doing on most occasions is checking the open rate whenever you send out a broadcast or a newsletter so the latest newsletter you've sent out is going to be shown in your dashboard as we're looking at here so i sent out an email with a subject line did you see this and we can see that out of two sent this will tell you how many emails were actually sent or how many recipients the email was sent to and here we can look at the open rate. So we know we've got a 50% open rate. That means, and if I hover over it like I'm doing now, you can see the actual numbers in the little pop-up window there. Total opens one, unopened one. Okay, so we can get an instant look at the open rate for this email. And this email, by the way, was sent out in a simple HTML email so that GetResponse could track this information. 
Now, if you want to find out what the open rate is for any of your past newsletters or broadcasts, then we'll go back up to the top of the page. And we're going to look at statistics and then come down to email analytics. Okay. At this point, we can choose our campaign and we can choose the newsletter or email that we sent out to that campaign. So if you have numerous, we'll hit the drop down box and click the one that we want to see the stats for. Okay. And then we can find all the information here at any given time. And we'll also see the numbers at the very top. So not just the graph, not just the percentage. We'll also see the numbers laid out for us here. Again, just choose your campaign, then choose the, the actual newsletter or email that you sent out. And then it's going to show up right here, just like it did on the dashboard, with a little different uh, view. Okay. Now let's talk about bounce rate. Okay. Whether you're looking in the dashboard or looking here in the email analytics, you'll see a bounce rate percentage right here. So what is a bounce? There are two kinds of email bounces, soft bounce and a hard bounce. A soft bounce is an email message that gets about as far as the recipient's mail server, but it's bounced back before it reaches the recipient. Probably the best example of this, the most common, is when a uh, recipient has a full mailbox. GetResponse handles these emails automatically for you in the background, so They'll make several attempts to send an email to them, and if it continuously gets bounced back, even if it's just a full mailbox, they'll make several attempts, but if it looks like they just can't get it through and someone's just constantly having a full mailbox, uh, that email will be removed from your account. Now, a hard bounce. This is an email message that has been returned to you because the recipient's address is either invalid, the domain doesn't exist, uh, the recipient is unknown, or the recipient's mail server has blocked your server. Typically, these are just known as bad email addresses. Okay, You don't want those in your account. The good news is you don't have to manually remove them. Again, GetResponse takes care of these automatically for you. Hey guys, all right. Today I'm going to tell you a story. One, two, three, two. Hey, now I'm going to tell you a story. All right, This is a story involving my email list, and it's got a great lesson, so pay attention. You know, about six, seven years ago, I thought I was being too aggressive with my email list. I mean, in that time, I must have had a good database of 50, 60,000 people. I used to send them emails, and it was, a, it was just a, my business was booming. It was doing great. I mean, amazing. And I got to the point where I felt I was emailing them too frequently. I was probably emailing them once a day, maybe sometimes once every other day, but I still felt too frequent. I just, my, my inner, instinct said I should really decrease the amount I mail. So, all right, I made the executive decision to stop emailing so often, right? Guess what started to happen? I, well, so I started mailing like once or twice a week max, and I tried to make those emails very powerful, full of information, content, and they were, I put extra effort into them, and I thought I'm doing a service to my subscribers by doing this. And all of a sudden, a month goes by, two months go by, and I stick to this instinct because I thought this was the right thing. But I start to notice that everything is plummeting. Everything is dropping. My results, my click-throughs, my opens, everything is just going down the tubes. Here I used to have a vibrant, crazy, awesome email list. And I could do crazy things with it, get a lot, a lot of clicks. I could make leaderboards, promote people's offers, do well there. And here, I can't do any of that anymore now. You know, I was getting half, if not less. I was pretty bummed out. I thought maybe my email list is dead. Maybe these people have been on too long. I got to do something new. I got to go find a new email list. And I happened to be at an underground seminar. You know, the underground seminar were run by Yannick Silver. And there was someone on stage who was speaking. And he started his entire speaking segment with the following words. I'll never forget this. He said, I have an email list of 150,000 people and I email them three times a day. And I remember thinking, what? You lost your mind? How are you, he used to email them morning, lunch, dinner. Okay, three times a day, morning, lunch, and dinner. And he, he said that he had never had a problem. And I thought he was insane. I thought he had lost it. But then he continued to talk through the session and explain that people would actually message him if he missed an email. If an email was delayed, people got trained to expect his email. And he said, and he challenged everybody in the audience that whatever, how of, however often you're emailing your list right now, unless it's three times a day, 
double the number of times you contact your email list starting today as a minimum. And you will see the results of it. Now that was, I heard that at the perfect time because my, I was really, you know, it was like all the danger signs were going off when it came to my, my email business, my inbox business. And so I initially didn't believe it. I thought he was lying, but he was here a big renowned marketer doing millions of dollars a year in revenue and on Yannick Silver's underground stage. Those people are vetted marketers. You can trust them. So I listened, I listened, then all of a sudden he pulls out stats and graphs and he starts showing us proof that this works. So eventually I was convinced. I ran out of the room, I went right to the lobby, I opened my laptop, I called up my main content person who writes all of my content. At that time I, I had started building a team and, and I said, we're going to start emailing our list every day. And she goes, what? You lost your mind? We, we decided to stop. That was too much and blah, 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 blah. We used to mail every other day and now you want to mail every day. And I said, stop it. I'm going to do this. I want to test it. I want to see what happens. Our list is anyways dying. No one's clicking. No one's opening. No one cares. And guess what happened? Within two weeks, two weeks, turn that list right back around and it went right back to what it used to be. It went right back to opening, clicking, buying and I was stunned and shocked, but it made sense. You know, I thought about it later as, it, as a psychologist, someone who just, you know, loves psychology. I thought about it and guess what? Makes sense. People forget if you mail them once a week, there's a light, highly likely chance that they're going to either not know who you are or they're going to put it as something to do next later. All right. But if you're mailing them every single day, they may not read your mail on Monday. But they'll read the one on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. So moral of the story, this is a really widely asked question I get. Anik, how often should I mail my list? And I always say this, you ready? It's, a, it's an answer that there are a lot of people out there who would argue with me on. It's a controversial answer, but I don't care. I have proof. I stick by it. However often your heart desires, that's the answer. Listen, I've met marketers that mail two, three times a day. I personally don't because that's too much work. I like to mail them once a day, but almost all of my databases will hear from me a minimum of once a day with, with the exception of one or two days a week that, you know, is not mailed. So there is no such thing as mailing them too often, but whatever you do, try to stay regular because you can train your list to expect to hear from you. All right. See you on the next one. All right, it's time to talk about relationships. And no, I'm not talking about dating or any of that stuff, but a relationship with your list. Look, a true inboxer, a smart inboxer, is going to focus always on catering to their subscribers. Okay, every business has a customer, right? Well, as an inboxer, your customer is your subscriber. Whether they've ever bought from you or made you any money or not, every single one of them is your customer. For example, Google was once asked, who's your customer? Many people thought they would respond, they're advertisers. They're the people giving them the money. But Google actually responded and said, the people who search on Google are our real customers. Now, that is the same type of mentality you as an inboxer have. Your subscribers are your customers, so customer is king. What do they want? And you, give, you find out what they want and you give them what they want. Now, when you build a relationship with your list, you are going to make three, four, five times the money from that list than if you don't. If you just have this opt-in base, this list, this autoresponder, and you hammer them with offer after offer after offer after offer and anything under the sun without trying it, without knowing whether it's good, without knowing if it's bad, it may work and you may make a lot of money for the first two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and guess what's going to happen? Your unsubscribes are going to go through the roof and people are going to leave or the ones that stay are going to begin to ignore you. Your open rates will plummet. Your click through rates will plummet. Your EPCs will go to nil to none and that is going to destroy your inboxing business. However, if you learn to do a good mixture and actually provide value for those who are on your list, well, where are they going to go? They're going to begin to love you more and more. And I've always said the inbox blueprint business model, is about showing you and helping you have a voice to the world, 
change the world, right? Get your message out there. And that's what's going to attract someone back towards you. That's what's going to make someone want to follow you. That's what's going to make someone want to stay on your list. That's what's going to make someone want to buy a product you endorse. Do you know how many people purchase a product um, that has been endorsed by somebody solely because it came from someone, it, they were on a list and that person who owns that list, you know, we'll call him, uh, just call him Thomas for now. Thomas, Thomas sent me an email and told me to buy your product, so I did. I hear that all the time. People begin to feel like they know you and the better that relationship, the more they're going to respond to whatever you want them to do. So always focus heavily on relationships. Now, let's talk a little bit more about that. Let's get into more detail. How do you build a relationship with your list? Well, by giving to them, by teaching them, by showing them, guys, you know, by showing them something, by teaching them something, by spreading your word and your message to them. How can you do that? Well, first of all, brand building is huge. A lot of people are afraid of putting their face out there, afraid, afraid of doing videos. You know, for example, I'm doing a video right now. I love it. But I've been doing this for 11 years. It's easy for me, right? But you're watching me. You are getting to feel like you know me. Now, you're getting used to seeing me teaching you. And whenever that happens, you're beginning to think of me as a teacher, as your coach, as someone you listen to. So when I have something that I endorse, another product, you're more inclined, don't you? I mean, I'm asking you, think about your own self. Aren't you more inclined to take that recommendation and go purchase the product because you feel kind of, you know me, you've been through my material, you've been through my content, you know I'm not going to endorse something that's not good for you. Well, that's exactly what you need to emulate to your list. There's a lot of ways to do it. I'm not saying you have to get on video, all right? Not at all. As a matter of fact, for the first maybe four years of my inboxing business, way back when I first started, you couldn't even see a picture of me on the internet, all right? I don't like still photography. There's very few pictures of me around on the internet. And you couldn't see a video. You couldn't even hear my voice. But today, as I've grown beyond that, I want to teach you and show you the fact that putting your voice, your picture, your video out to the world, out to your list can make a massive difference. Watch how I do my relationship building. Sometimes you're going to get an email from me and I'm going to link you to my blog. And on my blog, there may be a piece of content, an article, there may be a survey, there may be a video, there may be an interview I've done with someone else. That's content. And I'll send you to my blog and there will be nothing to buy other than, hey, look, there's some great thoughts I had, my voice, my message, and I want to share it with you. Sometimes you'll see me take you to my Facebook page where I've made a short post, a short comment, a short video. And again, I'm trying to get you to go to my Facebook page so that you can engage with my Facebook page. That way, every single day, you're getting little tidbits from me. See, what I'm trying to do as I build my relationship with you is I'm trying to make sure that you come across me multiple times a day on Twitter, on Facebook, on blogging, through email, and eventually, very soon, through mobile phone. So that, again, you begin to feel like you know who I am. So what I want you to learn how to do is when you send out emails, I want you to always think relationship. I always want you to think, how would I want to be treated by Onyx? Use a personal example. How would you want me to treat you? Would you want me to hammer you every single day with offer after offer after offer without me reviewing it, without me knowing what it is? Just, I make money so I send it to you? You wouldn't want, you wouldn't want that now, would you? Right? So nobody wants that. And that's not the right way to do it. And that's not what an inboxer does. So begin to think in terms of, delivering content and value to your list. And I don't mean do this every day, okay? I am very happy to promote to my list, as you will see. I endorse products, and when I do it, I go aggressive. If I really want you to buy something, I'm not shy to say, hey, listen, buy this. This is good. So I don't mean go, you know, I don't mean crawl into a shell and always just be too scared to promote anything or recommend things because you want to build this relationship, you want to be the good guy. That doesn't help anybody. And believe me, your list, they want to buy stuff, okay? You're, when you're in a niche and when you enjoy a space, you like spending money in it. You want to be told what's good. You want to know that this product is being endorsed by someone you trust because they took the time to review it and they feel it's worth your time. That in itself is a value. So it's okay to promote. Now, what kinds of relationship building emails can go out? First of all, when you write emails, there's long emails and then there's short emails. So should you write, wrong, should you write long emails or should you write short emails? 
my answer is this, a combination of both. I like to keep my readers off their toes. I don't want you to get used to a certain type of mail from me because then it kind of gets monotonous and it gets boring and you're more likely to maybe just let that email kind of go where all of a sudden one day it's a free video and the email is two sentences with a link to my blog to watch the video. Another day it's a nice long story. It's a something, it's an engaging story. Something happened to me at the grocery store today I wanted to share with you, right? It gets you to read this like this story. The third day, it's a medium length promotion where I say, hey, listen, there's a free video that was released by somebody else. I really want you to watch it, all right? The fourth day, maybe it's a link to my Facebook and it just says, hey, have you liked me on Facebook yet? I give lots of cool tips and freebies away. Go like me on Facebook. So what I'm doing is some days I may ask you as my subscriber to go watch a 40 minute video. Some days I may ask you to simply click a link, uh, click a link and click like on Facebook. So some days big action, some days little action, some days long swipe, some, day, some days short swipe, okay? But the only thing I'm very consistent about is my mailing schedule. I wanna make sure I'm in touch with my list almost every day with the exception of weekends sometimes, right? But the rest of it, I like to mix it up, all right? Sometimes I'll send you an email that has images in it, sometimes it won't. So where are different places to build a relationship well, firstly, you can set up your own blog, as you see I've done at onyxandgall.com. Secondly, you can set up your own Facebook page, super easy. YouTube page, Twitter page. Those are four great places to mark your territory and send your list to. You can send them long emails, you can send them short emails, but essentially, if you're gonna deliver content, those are the ways to do it. Now, a lot of people like to deliver content in the actual email. They'll actually put the whole newsletter in the email. Not a bad idea. I don't like doing that. Here's why. I almost always put my content somewhere else. It's on a blog, it's on Facebook. And yes, sometimes I'll put a long rant or a long story in the email, but it's very infrequent. And here, here's why. I like to keep my list and my subscribers trained and used to clicking. I want them to always be clicking to go somewhere. I want them to build the psychology in their mind that when they click a link, they get value. Click a link, get value. Click a link, get value. Why? Because when I send that promotion, when I'm endorsing a product and making commissions, you are going to be more likely to click a link because you think you're going to get value or you know you're going to get value. But if I start sending the content all in a newsletter and only the promotions in a link, you're gonna be very quick to figure out, oh, he's got a link in it, it must be a promotion. I don't feel like buying today, so I'm not even gonna bother watching it. And it could have been the video that would have changed your life, but you won't watch it, right? But if you don't know how to differentiate, <laughs> it could be content, it could be sales video, it could be anything, whatever it is, it's gonna be good, because I'm used to clicking his links and getting value. So I almost always like to deliver my content outside of the actual email. Personally, you'll notice me, I don't like using very long swipe because my, your click-through rates always drop. Look, it's the more you bury the link, the less people will actually read and see it. Today's a really fast-moving world. You don't have time to sit around and read a 15-page dissertation you've sent them through email. So even my long emails aren't that long, but I typically like to stay medium. You don't have to scroll much. The point is quick, it gets to the point, and I say, click a link, that's it. And I've sent some short swipes too, um, some short emails and they do superbly well. But if you start sending nothing but short emails, then it kind of looks like you're not really providing much value because people just think you're promoting all the time. You gotta keep it mixed up. But in the end of the day, remember this, this is the main thing to remember. Relationship building. Build a relationship with your list and monitor your open rates and click-through rates. When they start to decline, you're doing something wrong. Now I don't mean like per email. Okay, sometimes it's just a bad subject line or a bad email, it happens. But over the course of time, if you've noticed a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, a trend that, these, that the open and click-through rates are going down, if that's happening, that's, that's a warning sign, a big, big warning sign, and that means you're doing something wrong, the relationship is not strong, you gotta revert back and fix it, all right? So that's everything I have right now in my mind to talk about relationship marketing. We will talk a lot more about this, of course, in the future, and of course, on all of my live events that I do for you. Ready? <clears throat>
All right, now it's time to talk about the most important thing in the inbox blueprint business model. How do you make money, right? Okay, so when you have an email list, there are essentially two main ways of making money. And then within those two, there's kind of like sub ways, right? So the first of which is your own product, all right? And the second is the more popular and the one that we spend almost 99% of the time talking about in this particular course is affiliate marketing. Okay, now what's affiliate marketing? It's basically, uh, not basically, it's exactly promoting somebody else's product and earning a commission. But there's different kinds of affiliate marketing and that's what we're gonna get into right now. So for the purposes right now, we are just going to put a big X through your own product. The reason is that is in itself its own course and we will definitely be teaching that in the future. But for right now, it's you know, a little above and beyond the means of what we wanna do. Plus, it takes time, okay? I don't know if you've seen the video of that shows you the making of <laughs> Inbox Blueprint, but I'm currently not just standing anywhere. I'm standing in a video studio with a multi-camera lineup and this course has taken us months to prepare between the launch materials and the actual content and all the moving elements. So having your own product and doing it right can be sometimes a lot of work. It also can be easier, but out of the scope of this particular product, what's really quick though, what you can start making money with like that within minutes, within minutes, not days, not hours, within minutes, is affiliate marketing. Now within affiliate marketing, there are basically two kinds of ways of making money. <clears throat> there is what I call percentage based. What's a percentage based? Let's say you promote an information product that is $100 and they offer you 50% commission. Very common with information products by the way, that's why I love information products. Because I sell a $100 product, usually almost minimum, they will give me 50% of that as my commission. I mean, all the costs are run by them, all product creation, all customer support, I just get 50 bucks. I have no cost, no support, no nothing. All right, so that's percentage based. There's also what I like to call CPA, well not what I like to call, what everyone calls CPA. What's CPA? Cost per action. Now within CPA, there can be two kinds. There can be a cost per sale, and there can be a cost per lead. Now, for you, it's not cost. For you, it's actually revenue. It's earnings per, but for the company doing it. So this is how the model works out. Believe me, I've done a lot, a lot of money with that, a lot, okay? Well, I love the CPA world when you just start as an inboxer. More specifically, I love the CPL lead world. Why? Well, do you remember when we talked about stats? Or if you haven't watched that video yet, it's a very, very important video to watch, where I talk about the stats behind an inbox business. Let me refresh your memory just for a second. Let's say you have a list of a thousand people, or, okay, fine, thousand people. Let me get a different color pen here. And I'll move, here, let's do something. Let's clear up some space on the board. All right. Now, let's say we've got a list of 1,000 people. That's it, nice small list. And I send them a message. I send them an email, okay? Typically, worst case scenario, you are going to get a 1% click-through rate. That's worst, worst case scenario. Okay, I have many where I get 7%. So we'll do an analysis with both of these. If you're doing 1% click-through rate, that means every day if you send an email to them, you are going to get how many clicks on 1,000 emails? You get 10 clicks, okay? Now let's say you're getting 7% click-through rate. But you know what, for sake of math, no, I'll keep it at seven. I don't wanna to get too aggressive, so 7% is, 7% click-through rate is like really good. So let's say you're getting 70 clicks, okay? Follow my math here. So 
when you have a thousand lists, this sounds kind of depressing, right? You're like, oh, that's it, I'm gonna send 10 clicks a day? Well, listen, it, it's, it's a marathon, not a race, okay? Not a sprint. So it takes time, but I'm being realistic. I'm giving you realistic numbers. Let's say 1% for a minute. Now this would be in a very aggressive space with very low branding. Um, so it's, it's much easier. When you have a thousand lists, typically the, the click-through rates can even go up to, get, can get up to 10%. When your list gets bigger is when your click-through rates begin to drop because of deliverability issues and all advanced stuff I'll talk about later. But for purposes of, you know, this. Let's say you are promoting a percent based product or a CPL sale ba a CPA sale based product. Well, that means someone goes to a sales page. You send 10 clicks to a sales page. Okay? And there's going to be two options. You can either send them to a sales page or a lead page. Sales page or lead page? So you send 10 clicks. Now, whenever you're trying to get someone to convert and purchase, buy something, okay, the kind of conversions, let's just say you sent them to a kick butt sales page that converts like gangbusters. Let's say it converts at 5%, okay, 5%. That's a superb conversion on a sales page. And it pays, I don't know, 50 bucks commission. Well, what's 5% of 10. Uh, I mean, can't even do the math right now, but it's probably 0.05. Very small, right? It's 0.5 or whatever. It's, it's, basically, it's not one. <laughs> so you didn't even get one sale. You didn't get enough traffic to get one sale, even at a 5% converting sales page. So this is depressing. Anybody starting off initially, they want to see some money coming in. They want to see some activity. And right now, if you, want, if you had a 5% uh, conversion, you'd have to mail a few times. You'd have to spend, you'd have to send basically uh, two days. You'd have to mail for two days in order to be able to get one conversion, okay? But 5% is aggressive. What if it was 2%? Now you have to mail for like six days just to get, or, or five days, just to get one conversion consistently, consistently, consistently. Right? And even that, it could be the same people clicking, so it could take more clicks. I mean, the, the math can be whatever. All right? So here, you end up making nil. Even at 70 clicks, at a 7% click through rate, you may make a couple of sales if it converts that high. But most sales pages convert between 1% and 2%. So if we're looking at a 1% conversion, you still may not make any sales. However, CPL typically converts at almost 50%. Depending, well, I should, I should frame that. Depends on what kind of CPL it is. Some CPL offers make you fill out a whole form, a big form, lots of fields, first name, last name, email, phone number, address, your age, your this, your that, your zip code. I mean, all stuff on one page. Obviously, conversions will drop to 10%, 15%, but then they pay more to make up for it. They probably pay you $10, $20, $30 per lead. But then there's lots of offers out there that pay you per zip code. You don't even have to get the person's email address. You just send it to a zip code page and for filling their zip code in, you'll get a buck. You'll get 75 cents. You get $1.25. Now on those pages, you typically have a 50% plus conversion, 60% plus conversion. Guess what? Even with 10 clicks, you're making money from day one. You're seeing the results come in. This is a psychology play, okay? For those of you who are just starting your business, even if you're just making a few bucks, I want you to be making money. Listen, we did a workshop where five people came in from all over the country. You've probably seen the video already. I brought them into a room and I said, guys, what are your goals? What do you want to happen in this workshop? And I remember the answer BJ gave me. And then I still remember Robert came in right behind him and laughed and said, that's all I want too. You know what BJ said? I want to make my first dollar online. That's all. I just want to make a dollar. I just want to know it's real so that I can, I can get motivated and inspired and put, put more effort into it. But I've never even made a dollar. Well, guess what? With the lead-based system, you can. You can make at least a dollar every day. You can make money with a half a, a list half this size. You could have 500, you could be making money. You could have 300 people on a list and you could be making money. 
So that's why I'm very big on joining CPA networks. I'm very, very, very big about joining CPA networks because it's, well, it's important, all right? So both of these awesome ways of making money Today, in my business, fast forward, let's say you've got a list of a quarter million, half a million, a million people like I do, you will make a lot, a lot, a lot more money by promoting sale-based offers. Hands down. But in the beginning, I love lead-based offers. Love them. So we're going to teach more about that. We're going to train more on that. We're even going to help you launch your own CPL offer so that you can start building your list and we'll give you access to a lot of CPL offers launched by other inboxers so that you have something every day to be able to promote to your list no matter how small or how big. But this is how your list makes you money. These are, this is it, it's very simple and I'm not gonna make it any more complicated than that. We can get into launches, we can get into webinars, we can get into a lot of stuff which are all great ways of making tons of money but that's for the advanced section because you have to have a list that can drive a decent volume of clicks for webinars or launches to make you any money. All right, for now, this is what I wanted to share with you, kind of get you thinking on the right path. All right, let's talk about the Inboxer Webinar Domination Method. How to promote webinars to your email list and how to do it efficiently how to get the most number of people to show up at a webinar firstly I want to talk about why do we promote webinars at all why not just send an email message to a video sales letter why not just send an email message that just takes the person straight to a sales page well the advantage of doing a webinar is kind of two pronged first of all almost always whatever is being sold on the webinar is gonna be a higher ticket product so a higher ticket product means uh, you know, it can be anywhere from $200 to 1000 to 2000 to 5000 That doesn't mean that I haven't seen less expensive products being sold on a webinar, but typically, all right? Now, why do you care about that? Well, what's better? 50% of $100 or 50% of $1,000? Obviously thousand dollars right so the reason we like higher tickets especially as an affiliate is we make more money now the second thing is with a webinar you're able to get that personal touch okay so let's say your product is forty seven dollars fifty dollars that you're promoting it's not yours it's an affiliate eh, fifty bucks isn't a lot of money so you don't need to you know, the person doesn't need to hear your voice, feel like they're on a live webinar, feel like they're really hearing you and, and, you know, they don't need that touch. They can make an impulsive decision. It's not much at risk. If you're asking someone for $1,000 or $500 or $5,000, they need to hear a little bit more. They need to get to know you. They need to know who you are. They need to be, they need to be in a present, they need to be present in a location where they can get excited. And that's where what happens is with a webinar, you can still sell a higher ticket product and get the same kinds of conversions that you would have gotten by sending an email directly to a $47 video sales letter. The difference is that conversions are technically the same. However, however, the product price is far higher. So you as an affiliate could theoretically make a lot more money. Now I say theoretically because I have been on webinars or I have promoted webinars that were a raging, raging success. I've actually made over $300,000 in one webinar as an affiliate at one point in my life. So I've also done webinars where I've made $50. True story, $50, the whole webinar. It was a total waste because promoting a webinar is not the same as promoting just something that goes to a video sales letter or a sales page. Promoting a webinar is a full-on commitment and a full campaign. All right, and I'm talking about this from the perspective of an affiliate, not the person running the webinar. That's a whole other uh, you know, strategy behind that. But so let's say I'm going to make some assumptions here, and we're going to do some numbers and some number crunching, and then I'm going to give you a mailing schedule that you should be using. So let's say you have an email list of 10,000 people. Well, if you have an email list of 10,000 people, what does that mean in the end? How many people? 
do you anticipate are going to show up for the live webinar? Now, this is a rough case study, rough math, okay? Because so many things can influence that. First of all, what time and day is the webinar? How have you promoted it? Who is the webinar with? How nice was the, how good is a webinar sales page or the opt-in page? How good is the follow-up to get someone from opting in to the webinar? There's like a gazillion little marketing things that happen. But let's say you have a 10,000 person list and you're going to do two emails before the webinar, okay? And I typically recommend three, so let's say you're gonna do three emails before the webinar. Let's say you do really, really good and you send uh, 500 clicks per. 500, 500, 500 clicks per email you send out. What you can anticipate from an opt-in perspective, how many people are actually gonna opt in for the webinar? I'm just gonna use rough math, and this is assuming that the page promoting the webinar is really, really good. Let's say on the first mailing, you get 50% because it's the first one. 250 people opted in. Let's say on the second mailing, that's gonna drop to 30%, probably because a lot of the same people clicked again. So you get 150. And let's say on the last mailing, it drops to 20%. This, would, this drop could be more, but rough math. So 100 people. So essentially for a webinar, you were able to get 250, you were able to get 500 people registered. Okay, this is good math to know because a lot of people assume, well, I got 10,000 person list, I'll get 1,000 people in a webinar. Very difficult, very difficult because you're probably maxed out at even being able to get about 500 registrations. Now let's say you got 500 registrations, how many of these are gonna show up for the live webinar? Oh man, there was a day where 50, 60, 70% would show up. Now, that day is really disappearing because so many people do webinars and the webinars are so, well, overdone almost in so many spaces, but in every niche is different, okay? Um, certain niches you'll get higher rates, certain niches you'll get less. For example, in my personal development niche, with my list, I'll get a 30 to 40% show rate still. That's impeccable. That means if 500 people registered, 30% of this, 150 to 200 people would be on the live webinar. That's pretty good. I've even seen that go as high as 250. Personal development people will still show up. However, in internet marketing, how many webinars are there per week? You tell me. You're an internet marketing enthusiast. You're on my list. You're probably on a bunch of other lists. There's webinars all the time. So the show rate has really dropped. Now we're looking at closer to 20%. You know, and that's a good show rate. 20 to 30 is like solid in the internet marketing space. In the personal development space, I expect more like, uh, I'd say 30 to 50 as a, as a common, kind of a common. Now remember, these numbers can change. You could be doing some very special event where you've really pre-qualified people before they even opted in. You could be charging a dollar for the webinar as an affiliate, so you know then they're really much more likely to show up. So there's a lot of things that can happen to change these numbers. But this 500 can quickly become 100 live. But the cool thing is, when it's 100 live and a webinar is done well, you can easily anticipate 10 to 15% sales if it's a very high ticket product, $1,000. Or even 20 to 40% conversions if it's more of like a $200 to $300 product. Now check this out. Let's say you convert 10 to 15%. Also, I'll just take, uh, I'll take uh, 10 as an example here, okay? So that means you got 10 sales at 5,000 at 50% commissions, you made $5,000, right? So at 10, at 10 sales, $500 each. So you made $5,000 for having sent 1,500 clicks. It's a really good EPC. It's a kick butt EPC. That's why we promote webinars, okay? And that could even be higher. So this is just some really quick explanation of why an affiliate should promote a webinar. Now, how do you promote a webinar? We're gonna just do a quick case study. I'm gonna assume there's a webinar coming up on a certain day and a certain time, and I'm gonna show you how I, as an affiliate, would push that webinar. 
because I would push it pretty aggressively and heavy, especially if it's converting. So let's just say we have a webinar coming up on Wednesday. Put that in the wrong way. It's Wednesday. We have a webinar coming up on Wednesday at 9 p.m. ET. Let's just assume that as the date. All right. If I'm going to promote this as an affiliate, I have two options. It depends on how aggressively I want to promote this. Option number one, I'm going to say is the non-aggressive. And option number two, I'm going to say is the aggressive. Let's go with the non-aggressive. For the non-aggressive, what I would do is send out a promotion on Tuesday at about 9 a.m. or so, and another one on Wednesday at about 9 a.m. Okay, that's just to get people to register. Here's what's happening. With so much noise out there and so many people doing webinars now, we're actually finding that it's useless to promote webinars very early on. So if you start promoting on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it's, it's useless. All right? It doesn't, you got to get instant. People, it's got to come up very soon or else people forget. They register for other webinars and they move on. So we typically go a day, maximum two days before. And two days before, it's typically only if I know it's a big webinar. I really want to push the heck out of it. I know it converts. It's going to kill it, this and that. Or it's my own webinar to my list when I really want to see major results. So I push it, I'll push it aggr very aggressively. And then once the webinar is done, there's the whole post webinar. See, every webinar will have a replay because it was recorded. And then you need to relate, release that replay where people can watch it essentially as a VSL, video sales letter. Guess what you can do? With a good webinar, you can easily, easily double your sales. So you remember how I said I had uh, 10 sales, made $5,000? Well, if I could send two more replay mailings, I should be able to easily double that to 20 sales and make $10,000, okay? So what I would do here, Wednesday night happens, Thursday, Again, in the morning, I would mail out the replay. And again, Friday, I'd hit it aggressive. I'd hit it again. So in a non-aggressive, I would mail it one, two, three, four, four mailings would be reserved for one webinar. Okay? Now, if it's killing it, I'll push it through the weekend. If it's continuing to do really well, I'll push it through the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. As long as the EPCs are there, I'll keep mailing it. Now, let's say I really want people to show up for the live. And I want to be aggressive. Here are some options. I'll do Tuesday 9 a.m., Wednesday 9 a.m., and then again Wednesday at 8 p.m., hour before. And push the heck out of it. If I really want to push it, I'll do Tuesday 9 a.m., Wednesday 9 a.m., Wednesday 3 p.m., Wednesday 9 p.m., sending out a message at 9 p.m. saying, we're starting. Come live right now. It's, that's a great message to send out. A lot of times we do it because People can instantly click a link and join. So it's really instant gratification. You get a lot of show rate for that. So I'm not ashamed. Yeah, I'm not, um, what was the word I'm looking for? Not ashamed. I'm looking for the word. Uh, I'm not shy of sending a mailing on Tuesday 9 a.m., Wednesday 9 a.m., and then again Wednesday 9 p.m. It just kind of depends. You kind of feel out how the flow is going. If you have enough registrations, if it's getting excitement, if it's getting exciting, if people seem to be pumped up, it's really, you know, the opt in page for the webinar is converting well to your list. I'll promote more aggressively. Okay? So, but what I try to avoid doing now, as opposed to what I used to do a year or two years ago, a year or two years ago, years or a year or two years ago, I would have started promoting this Monday or even Sunday. Now I don't. Now I like to start right before 24 hours, 36 hours maximum before the actual webinar. All right? As an affiliate, if you can drive even any kind of volume in clicks, try promoting a webinar. Find a good high converting one in your niche, in your space that other people you know have done and can vouch for and try promoting it. You could make a lot of money and if you just use this schedule and this format, you'll do really well. All right, I'll see you in the next one.